Oh, wow. This is so exciting. This is the last lesson in the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Unit for sixth grade. Today's lesson is called Investigating the Effects of Changing Winds. So before we get started, a couple of things that you're going to need. You'll need something to write on and with, someone to talk to, and if you have access to the Amplify Science Sims, then we're going to use the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Sim. Okay, so quick review. In lesson six, we learned about ocean currents. And I'm wondering if you've been thinking about it and why you think currents might change. So before we get into why currents might change, just let's, let's just remember what affects ocean currents. So you're looking at this list right now and right away you're probably remembering that prevailing winds is a huge part of what causes ocean currents to form. But what else? Do rivers or the moon or continents have anything to do with ocean currents? Um, the answer is yes, actually, the continents also affect ocean currents. And so when we were exploring the sim, we saw two things affected ocean currents. The prevailing winds, which are represented by these big white arrows, show that they are pushing on the ocean currents. But on our planet, we have these giant continents in the way. And so sometimes you'll have an ocean current that wants to flow towards the west, but it can't. It gets blocked by a continent, so it has to travel up the continent or down the continent. And this image right here shows on Earth how complex this can can make all the currents look. We have these gyres that form between continents because they get turned one way and then the other way. And we also can see how some of the water in the current is warm and has much more energy than the ocean around it, or some ocean currents can be cold and carry less energy than the ocean around it. So during lesson six, we figured out the following things. We figured the ocean currents go in the same direction as the wind, and when you change the direction of the wind, the water changes direction too. We learned that the currents go faster when the wind is set to high and they go slower when the wind is set to low. We learned that when you change the direction of the wind, then you can actually change the direction of the current, which is really cool. And we also, of course, learned that the continents force the currents to change direction. We're trying to figure out why the air temperature in Christchurch, New Zealand, is colder during El Nino years. So what do we know about the ocean currents that form near Christchurch, New Zealand? So ocean currents beginning near the equator are pushed by the prevailing winds. We can also see that as they're pushed, they kind of get run into Australia and then um, they seem to turn completely around, which is weird, and then they go past Christchurch. So what could be causing this? So what we see here is that this picture shows the prevailing winds that are happening on our planet. So you can see at the equator where the current that goes past Christchurch forms, the water is super warm and it's pushed and pushed and pushed. And when it hits these islands here and also this continent, they get pushed this way and they start to travel down the coast. This is the East Australian current. But then when they get kind of towards the bottom, look at this, the prevailing winds are going in the opposite direction, which then pushes the current back out and across New Zealand. I'm going to show you a quick little video I made of the sim, and you can kind of see a quick review of that. Hey, let's try to use the sim to model what we know is happening to Christchurch, New Zealand's ocean current. So as I'm looking here at the sim, I can kind of drag it around and I'm looking for um, a warm ocean currents getting pushed against a continent and then pushed out this way because I'm looking for a location on the sim where a warm current along the equator is pushed along until it hits a continent and then it's dragged southward until a another prevailing wind that's moving towards the east pushes it this way. And I see that this location seems very similar to like the east coast of Australia, then pushing it out. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of my sensors and I'm going to place it right here. And when I do that, I can see that energy is transferred from the water to the air above it, just like is happening to the 
uh, the air above New Zealand from the warm ocean current. But if I turn the wind off and that warm water is no longer pushed from the equator, you can see it gets very cold. And look what happens. Warm energy has to transfer from the water to the air. And you can see that what happens there is that energy from the air is then transferred to the water. And that would make the temperature of the air begin to decrease. So using what we learned in the sim and what we learned as we've been exploring how ocean currents move, we can use this information to help us explain what might be happening at Christchurch, New Zealand. So now that we've explained the air temperature of Christchurch during a normal year, let's try to figure out what could make the air temperature change during El Nino. So we know that the direction of the currents is caused by prevailing winds. And we also know that the current near Christchurch changes during El Nino years. We can see the temperature is dropping. The water temperature is changing. So let's see if a change in the prevailing winds could have caused this change. So for this lesson today, we're going to use the sim to learn more about how the changes in prevailing winds can affect the amount of energy in the air. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the sim to learn more about these changes. And so we're going to have two missions. Mission one, I want you to find a location on the sim where there is a warm current going by and then make a change to the wind so that the air temperature of the location becomes cooler. So there's a bunch of different changes you can try, and I'll show you a, a few before you go off to the sim to explore. Then mission two is to find a location that has a cold ocean current passing by and make a change to the wind so that the air temperature of the location becomes warmer. And so you can see on my map here that I have two locations that I've chosen and you can look around and decide which locations you think would be best. So you're going to need a data table and a data table like this would be perfect. So you can pause the screen and write this, but basically you just need four columns and in the first one you want the initial or beginning air temperature and then afterwards you need the final or um, changed air temperature so also in the table you want to, sh to tell us like where is the location on the sim of of your sensor and then also what changes did you make? So a data table like this or notes like this would help you keep track of all your data. So on this table, I have latitude and longitude. And I know you know what latitude means and probably you've heard of longitude and you might know what it means, but I just wanna quickly review that latitude tells you how close you are to the equator or how far away you are and it goes up and down up from the equator all the way up to the north pole but longitude is something different it doesn't have to do with how far you are from the equator but instead there's an imaginary line that's drawn from the north pole all the way straight down to the south pole called the prime meridian and the longitude just tells you how far around the earth you are from the prime meridian and so because we have a horizontal and a vertical marker, we can actually locate any location on Earth using longitude and latitude. So on the sim, here's where you're going to find what that, where that is. Once you place your sensor, like I have a sensor here on location five, then in the top corner of the window that pops up, it tells you the location in longitude and also latitude and longitude. And it also tells you what the air temperature is, what the warm or cold ocean current temperature is, and it tells you what the land temperature is as well. Okay, so here's what we're going to do to explore the sim. So open the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Amplify Science sim and click on wind map mode from the menu and then select surface for the temperature view. And then place your sensors, one in a warm current location, one where there's a cold ocean current, and then press play and just observe the currents, um, what the air temperature is. Once the air temperature has stabilized, then make changes to the prevailing wind and see how that affects the currents and also the air temperature. And then record that data and then try some other 
different changes. So this is what the sim will look like when you're ready to start. You can see that the wind strength is set to medium and the wind direction is normal. So some of the things that you can can try out is increase the wind speed, decrease the wind speed, try turning the wind off completely, um, reverse the wind and see what happens there. And so in your data table, you'll want to record the location. And remember, you can find that in the top left corner of the sensor box and then also record the air temperature which you can see in the top right corner of the sensor box and then you're going to go ahead and hit play and and sort of see what happens the one of the things that you you also need to notice is the title at the top of my data table is for mission one the warm ocean current so you're also going to need a similar data table just make two of the same really of the ocean current the cold ocean current. Okay, so once you are ready to start, you can go ahead and go to the sim and start collecting your data and, and then come back and let's take a look at our data together. So if you don't have access to the sim, it's okay because I took some screenshots of what, what I had at the end of each of my missions so that I, we can talk about that data here together. Okay, go explore the sim and then come back. Okay, welcome back from your sim exploration if you went off and did it, and if you've just been watching the video with me, that's okay. This is a screenshot of what it looked like when I was done exploring the increased wind speed. So you can see I increased the wind strength to high, and the wind direction is still normal. And then I recorded the air temperature in both locations in my data table. And then I tried just decreasing the wind speed past medium all the way to low and saw how that affected the ocean currents, the air temperature, all of those things. And then I just turned the wind off completely. No more wind, it's gone. And you can see all those little white lines are gone and the energy around the equator is just piling up there because it's not getting pushed away from the equator the way it does when the wind is on. And I recorded how that affected the air temperature all the way at these sensors far away. And then finally, I tried switching the direction of the wind altogether. I hit reverse, and now the ocean currents are going in the opposite direction because the prevailing wind has changed. The prevailing wind affects the direction and, um, and speed of the ocean currents. And so, so if you did the same thing, if you completed all those missions, you'll have similar data, but the sim is set up to be, you know, really different every time you do it, just like data in real life. And so your numbers will be a little different than mine, but we should have the same trends in our data. So let's take a look at my data table. So I have here that the location was the same every time, so that's just filled in, and the initial air temperature was the same because I just took it at the beginning. If you took your initial air temperature several times because each time you restarted or reset the sim, that's okay. It's totally fine. So what I noticed with the first one, when I increased the wind speed, um, I didn't really see any change at all. <laughs> there was It was the same, but I, I did switch it. Um, when I decreased the wind strength, I actually saw the air temperature go down just a little bit. And then when I turned the wind off completely, I saw the temperature go down even a little bit more. Um, but then when I reversed the wind, the air temperature changed by um, almost two degrees Celsius. That's significant. That's a huge change in the overall air temperature of a location. Okay, so here's sort of what we discovered from this, that for mission one, location with a warm ocean current, why did changing the wind affect the air temperature? So the warm current that passed the location transferred energy from the ocean to the air, warming the air. But when the wind changed and the warm ocean current didn't pass this location anymore, um, the energy no longer transferred from the ocean to the air, so the air actually got a little bit colder, which is what we saw when we looked at our data. So let's take a look at mission two, the cold ocean current. And in this one, I increased the wind strength and I saw that the temperature dropped um, 0.1 degrees, but it 
it's pretty much the same. It didn't really seem to affect it very much. But when I decreased the wind strength, so it went a lot lower, um, the temperature actually went up a little bit. And then when I turned the wind off completely, the temperature rose up um, even more, almost one degree Celsius at that point. But then, and this is this is just wild, when I reversed the wind strength, the air temperature increased by about two degrees Celsius. And so for mission one, we see a similar thing that we saw for mission two, which is that location with the cold the current, why did changing the wind affect the air temperature? That's what we're discovering. And we saw that when the cold ocean current passed this location, then energy was actually having to be transferred from the air to the ocean, which made the air temperature a little colder than it would have been because some of its energy was getting transferred away. But when the wind changed and the cold current wasn't going past anymore, the air was able to hold on to its energy and was no longer transferring it away, so the temperature actually rose up a little bit. So, okay, we have figured out a lot of interesting things in this in this part of the lesson and we have a brand new key concept which is so exciting so here's what we know from our sims missions we learned that the air temperature of a location can change when the prevailing winds change because the change to the prevailing wind actually affects the ocean currents to change and the ocean currents affect how much energy is transferred between the air and the surface and so if the ocean currents change that means the amount of energy transfers away to or from a location will be affected. So our key concept is changes to prevailing winds affect ocean currents. Changes to ocean currents affect how much energy is brought to or taken away from a location. So now the question that we're trying to figure out is if Christchurch air temperature was cooler than usual during El Nino years, what changes could have caused this? And so we can see that, in fact, the temperature of the air at Christchurch, New Zealand during El Nino years is colder. And so if the air is colder, then is that going to be more like mission one or more like mission two? So let's quickly go back and look at our data. Okay, oops, there was my data. So here is a cold ocean current that's changing. And when the cold ocean current changes, either when the wind slows down, is turned off or reversed, we can see that the air temperature actually increases. That's not like the same as what's happening at Christchurch, New Zealand. So let's look at our other data. So in this data set, we can see that when there's a warm ocean current going by, which is similar to what happens in Christchurch, New Zealand, so turning off the prevailing wind or reversing the prevailing wind can actually decrease the air temperature. And so we figured it out. We, we know now what causes we know what causes the ocean currents near Christchurch, New Zealand to get colder during El Nino years. Something's happening to the prevailing winds. Okay, so let's, let's look at some more evidence in the next part of our lesson and come up with an explanation that we can send to Kitty Parada so that she can tell the farmers in Christchurch, New Zealand why the air temperature there it gets so much colder during El Nino years. They're going to be so excited to hear from you. Okay, we'll do that in the next part of our lesson.